Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're talking about BuildBox 3. Now I talked about BuildBox a while back when it uh, was just released for the free edition and I know a lot of you guys have some interest in this game engine. So I figured today I would do a quick hands-on, kind of show you what BuildBox was all about and then we got some news on the pricing structure that just changed with it and we'll kind of get into that after the fact. But here we are, this what you see in front of you is BuildBox. I'm going to tell you right off the hop, the entire UI, the entire experience that way is very clean, very streamlined. They put a lot of effort into their um, presence and it, and it definitely shows. When you come in here, you can go ahead and you can create, you've got a bunch of tutorials you could go from and you can upgrade the engine directly in place or update the engine directly in place. Now this is one of the new things they just did, this brand new demo and I'm going to use it as a showcase of how BuildBox works. And you can see, straightforward, we'll come back here and I'll show you later on how to make a uh, game from scratch, not, not the whole process, but just going through the beginning because it's really going to show you what BuildBox is like. Because the entire idea behind this is it does a lot of the work for you. This is one of the easiest game engines you are ever going to find. I also, a bit of a, a, a note is if you come into this 3D view that we're looking at right now and it's not looking right, if you're on an Optimus laptop, this guy does not run at all on my Intel GPU. Just one of those things to be aware of. But here we are, we are in BuildBox and we are in the main world right now. You can see here, uh, we've got entities in the world. You can see here is the scene graph of our world. Those are the things that make up this particular scene. Um, and then here is the raw asset available to us. Now we can actually bring in new assets and we can bring them in either, we can create them ourselves. We can just um, start cutting them out from different shapes. We can build shapes together or we can just drop in assets that are pre-configured. These actually have uh, logic already already attached to them, a bunch you can work with that way, or of course you can import in your own assets. You can bring in 3D models and 2D sprites and that kind of stuff as well. But you can just bring them in and add them to your palette that you're gonna work with for your game. So here we are back in the game. Now one of the things that I found very weird about uh, the way that BuildBox works is you can't actually do anything on instances. So here's your player in the world. All you can really do is set the position of your player um, and that's kind of it. Now you can, yeah. That's really, that's it. So I found that a little strange. On the instance level, you can't do anything. You have to do it at the asset level. So that means if you want to have different logic for two different entities in the scene, you're gonna to have to create two different assets, even if they're otherwise identical. It's really strange to me. So when you're dealing with instances, really all instances have is positional data, and that is it. But we'll go back here. Here is our player ship. You can see him in action right here. I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and uh, play this scene so you have an idea of what we're dealing with. So sound warning in effect. Uh, so here we go. We launch the scene. There is your build process. When you're dealing with, the... all right, there we turn that down. So here is the example game, and you're gonna see when we run it, game world. I can control with the mouse, and then you can use spacebar to fire the equivalent. So that is kind of, and it's the it's an infinite scrolling world that's gonna keep spawning these things in. So this is one of the samples that came with it. And you're gonna notice very phone oriented display. Um, we can also run it in different aspect ratios. We can have it um, portrait or landscape. But that is your editor version. Now you're gonna, if you wanna publish things out, you're gonna to need to have a commercial version and all that. We'll look at that in just a little bit of time. But if you're ready to publish, basically creating your game is just a matter of export and then picking the platform you wanna go with. Unfortunately, again, that is not available in the free version that we've got here. So, so far you see, all you've got is your player ship here and then an empty field. So how the heck did all the rest of that stuff happen? Well, we could have just populated our game world by bringing entities into it. So we just basically start creating things. So there, we could have just created an, an entity in the world like this and populated everything and had it kind of going and going. But what they've done here is more of a procedural approach. So what they've got is this guy right here, this controller, and this the controller is defined right there. So now we're gonna get into how the actual game logic works. And this uses a process called mind mapping. So you can see this mind map right here. This is your game or your level controller. This is the top level mind map controlling your entire process. So you see here, we start, and then we show the main menu, and then we show the main game world, and then we can potentially show, um, so it goes out here to the UI, game over or pause UI, depending on some logic. And then you got also here, so back to the main menu, we've got the ability to play some music. Uh, you can do, show some inner siddle or banner ads if you're monetizing your game that way. And then any of these things you can basically drill down into. So if I double click something, we open it up. So here we are in the UI. It's kind of composed the same way, but you see it's got a different set of asset libraries. So you've got things here like URL buttons, Facebook buttons, audio, um, and so on. So you've got various different assets available there for doing UI development. We flip on back over here and then we get back into our game world. We just click there and then we're into the logic of our game world. So now we've got individual things in our game world, such as 
right here you see we've got our player character. So how would we add logic to our player character? Well, that is done. You can select the player ship. Now, one thing I've noticed, and they don't use this at all here, but if you've got zero programming ability, one of the ways to do add logic to things in the world is you can do it via brain boxes down here. So once we've actually got a character or an object set from an asset, then we got a lot more control over here. All the various different components that make it up. Uh, we can handle them right here. So we've got some you know, 3D models going on and so on. And I can add a brain box to something. So here you can see various different you know, predefined pieces of logic. I can add these as components. So if we want to add a move controller or um, have it jump up and down or so on, you can control that via brain boxes. But if you're getting into a slightly more advanced point, what you're going to do instead is with the character selected, go to edit nodes. And that brings you into this guy. So this is the 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 logic graph or the node graph that's controlling the character. So you see here we've got move controllers. So if you touch or touch, we do the movement over here. Over here we've got on a UI button. So this is the incoming event. It fires off the spawn event. So we spawn a bullet in that particular case and we play a shooting sound. So there's how you respond to hitting the button of, you know, like the little joystick on screen button for fire, or here was hitting the space bar key. So here hitting space, we fire the sound and we spawn um, a missile. Now I don't know why they needed two different spawns here. It probably, uh, actually I'm not hundred percent certain why they did that to be honest. But uh, then we've got, here is a state controller. And this is one of those areas where I actually find this a little confusing because what, what is state one and state two? Like what is this? So when you take damage and I get what this is actually doing but it takes forever to actually figure this out or it's code, I would have got it in just a second. So here you see on start on the created event, set the state or state one and cause camera shake to be really small. And then on health event, when it when you take damage, it fires off to state two, which causes camera shake. So this is a way of when it's first started, no camera shake. When take damage, camera shake. And, and I don't actually find that any easier to read than I would have just code. But then again, I am not really a visual learner. So it kind of leave it to you to see which one of these you find better. But this is kind of how you set things up. Here you got when it's created, go ahead and create a model. So here is your uh, mesh model for the character, this guy right here, uh, a trail that follows him around or a control. And then, um, We've got another sound option when you're blown up, and that's kind of it. That That is the extent of what you need to control entities. Now, of course, you've got all of the various different palette options over here, so if you want to play a sound, you just basically bring in a sound thing and drop in the node. You notice the sound you're gonna play is over here. Is it looped and so on? And then you get rid of them, hit control D. So we got also control settings for touch joystick keyboard and so on. This is a very easy way to program things as long as they've got the functionality you want in here. Now, what happens when they don't have the functionality you want? What happens when you want to uh, do something that isn't available here? Well, let's go back here to our 3D game world and we'll go back to this guy. This controller here is the heart of the logic of spawning all the enemies and so on that are flying at you or the debris. And that is controlled here by the controller We'll double click that guy, bring it into its control point. And this one looks really simple. So basically on start, fire off three timers. Each one of those timers causes either spawn planets, spawn astronauts, or spawn ships. We're going here to spawn planets. See, we've got a lot of um, attributes we can set for the various different planets. And so far they only have one planet defined, but if you wanted to bring in more, you could easily do so. See them here, spawn astronauts. We've got all these various different astronauts defined, and those are all different assets. Those all fly at you. And then we can spawn enemy ships to come at you as well. So how does this spawn plan or spawn astronauts or spawn ship stuff work? Well, those are all actually scripts. So you've got the option, uh, I think it's under advanced. You could drop in a script node like this, and then you can define what the inputs are, what the outputs are like that. And then here is one that's defined. And then you're gonna notice here, you've got um, straight up JavaScript code. So if you want to have, so here it's defining all these various different attributes, which can be defined right here. And then here is your logic for controlling and moving the ship. And yeah, that's kind of it. You're gonna notice it's emitting a signal of type reset. So you see signals like so. And that is kind of how these script points work. This is how the logic of this game works. So if you want to get in and move beyond their simple, um, you know, node based, these guys right here, if something isn't available to you, then you can drop into the straight up code perspective and you can start working that way. And really that's kind of the extent of it. It's, um, it's doing a lot for you, but it's also going to frustrate you when it doesn't do something that you need. That's the point where I found uh, it both kind of at its best and at its worst. Now we've got uh, documentation here, walks you through uh, what you need to do. You'll also notice when I come back here, there was also the JavaScript API reference. 
So if you're going to get into the coding stuff, that is available right here. So you got all the nodes to find, all the various different pieces to find. It's pretty straightforward and simple. Um, a lot of it is done by uh, signals, uh, the connections between script nodes to make things work on the, the various different sides to communicate between objects. Uh, but it's a pretty straightforward programming API, but also means it's kind of limited at times too. And um, then you've got functionality there. You can uh, you know, add physics to physics objects, have them automatically simulate in the world. And as I mentioned to you very early on, I'm gonna show you this from scratch. So I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna create a new, we're gonna save nothing. So by the way, all that what we just saw is available as a new template. So if you just wanna check what we just did right there, and there are a ton of templates here, but here you're gonna see how incredibly focused on mobile build box is. So if you wanna come in here and do the brand new from scratch experience, you come in here and you do either a 2D or a 3D game, or you can walk through with the wizard. Using the wizard, it's just basically a series of, what kind of game do I want build me questions? So let's say I wanna create a 3D game, and that here you can see how mobile focused this is. So even though you can create a game for Steam or for Windows PCs, uh, you can really clearly see that this guy is aimed at mobile. So when you pick landscape, you can pick the perspective that you want to work from. So let's do a third person from behind. Uh, do we want to free roam or side scroll? We'll go with free roaming. Uh, you can set a default set of controls. So let's do an on-screen touch screen. And then you can pick like your background. So we'll do a sunset sky. We'll have normal gravity. You pick your default character. You can swap this out, obviously, after the fact. Uh, your ground, let's throw some meteorites into the world. And then it's going to basically create you a game. So here is your, your simple logic. So we've got the start screen, which you obviously would build up your own title screen after the fact, your 3D world, and then your UI, which obviously you're going to want to build. But here you see your on-screen controller that it created for you. And then your 3D world is right here. There you see it created a camera for you, your model, and that's kind of about it. We got a start and an end for this level. Uh, I don't, yeah, we got a meteorite in our scene. And then you basically start working from there. So it can do so much of the basic logic for you. So this guy, um, this spaceship has a controller for the, the, the scene, the, the way control scheme that you asked it to set up for you. Um, and that that is how guided this is. So it sets up 95% of a game for you. And again, as long as it provides the functionality that you want to see, BuildBox is kind of amazing, If especially if you are a beginner focused developer, but it's when you start running into things it can't do, where you start smashing your head off the wall. And one thing I found really frustrating, there's a few things, like I ran into some physics glitches when I was playing around the physics. Um, the the uh, community doesn't seem to be that great. I see, I see a lot of questions. So I, I basically said, oh, well, why is physics not working? Why is this object clipping through this object? So I searched for it and I found six or seven threads asking the same question, but nobody answering it. And that is always a little concerning. But anyways, that is BuildBox. I gotta say, once again, the user interface and the experience is very, very polished. Uh, this whole mind map approach to things, it, it's it's going to definitely appeal to some people and less so to others. Um, but it, it, I can see how it would appeal if you weren't a coder. And then here you see, again, the logic that controls things. So if you wanted to do things, it's pretty simple. So if I wanted to do, for example, whenever you touch the screen on a pressed event, we're going to go ahead and play a sound. All you have left to do is physically drop the sound in there and then boom, that was the code and the logic to play a sound. So if you're not a programmer, that is some easy stuff to handle. If you are a programmer, you, again, it, it's still pretty easy, but you're going to eventually hit some limitations. And once again, the one way to get around those limitations is to jump into script like so. But you kind of get into when you're editing your script, you don't get a good coding experience. You don't get a debugger. So you're going to do good old fashioned print debugging like you would. So I, I don't know if if you're a beginner and you're looking for a codeless experience, this is actually a really good one. If you want a, just a game engine and you're capable of coding, that's when it starts getting a bit more questionable for me. But there is a polish there. I, I, I am impressed on a level. So as I mentioned earlier on, there's also some news. Hopefully I didn't overwrite it. All right, here we go. So they've announced that th their plus plan is now available. So they've got a couple of different pricing levels and now they've got this new plus plan in there. So what this one does is um, 
option to remove the build box logo from your splash screen and the ability to add five worlds to your game with unlimited number of scenes. So the current plan kind of limits you down to one level and that will be $10 a month or $75 a year. So we're gonna flip on over here. So that's the new plus plan. Here are the current ways that things are set up. So at the $0 tier, you can have up to one world, unlimited number of scenes. You can't customize the splash screen. You can export for mobile only, no desktop exporting. Um, you can't have other ad networks. You can't have in-app purchases. So that's actually still fairly reasonable for a completely free product. Then you get into the plus tier, which they just announced. Now you can have up to five worlds with unlimited scenes. You can customize the splash screen and you can export for desktop. And then we kind of get into uh, pro and then here's where you get unlimited worlds, unlimited scenes, basically no limitations at all. And you can do everything you ever wanted. So pro is uh, 60 bucks a month with a one year commitment. Uh, plus is uh, 9.99 per month with a one year commitment. And then of course, free is free. Now the cool thing is you're not gonna get anything with the one that you couldn't already trial with the free version. So if you wanna check this guy out, you can check it out with free. You can publish for mobile and mobile only, but it does still give you a pretty good idea of what Buildbox is all about and if it is right for you. Um, now there is an area where I dropped a bunch of stuff in there and I, I did hit a performance wall pretty early on. Uh, so if you're going to try and make something really elaborate with this guy, test out and do a bit of a load test first to make sure the performance is there for you. Um, and I guess the rest of it kind of comes down to personal opinion, what you think of the uh, user interface, the workflow, the programming method. I think that for their target audience of the no code movement, they've done a reasonable job of it. There's definitely some areas like that whole uh, state machine I showed you earlier on. They could improve it to make readability better, but for the most part, they've done a pretty solid job. Now this build box isn't really for me, but then again, I think in code first, so I find uh, almost all these visual programming languages other than blueprints, they're normally a little bit inferior to just straight up coding for me. But if I was looking for something and I just wanted to kind of get in, get my hands dirty, have some assets to work with and kind of play around, I could recommend BuildBox to someone for sure. So let me know what you think of it. Comments down below, uh, the new plus plans and all that stuff. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.